I'm trying to serve up vibes from the colors that I create on a canvas. Okay, is she, is she being poetic today? Alicia was saying that she feels like we were just here. Like just. Yeah, it's just yeah. And you know what's funny? For the tube team, it's gonna feel that way for them too. Yeah, because, because you just shot that. <laughs> like, exactly. La last week's video is like the show, and then this video is like us literally taking it down. It was up for a month, y'all. I know for y'all it seemed like it was up for four days, but it's been up for a month, and now we are going through and taking them all down. So that's what the process is. They set all of the moving blankets up. We're just gonna wrap the frames with that, and then, yeah, we're gonna get to it. All right, take care. in here y'all literally almost didn't make it but it worked out <laughs> We might need to, well, face to face. Oh, we can't just like slide it right in? Like no. Mm -mm. She's too tall. So let's. Oh, we gotta stand it up? Yeah, I just wanted to put her on her face. face. Oh. Less than four thousand pounds. Oh, we can get out the door up there. That might be tricky. We'll see. <sighs> Y'all, <laughs> we are exhausted, to say the very least. Okay, what time is it? It's eleven oh four. We're just leaving the studio loaded up the things. Alicia headed home on home. She's so amazing. Alicia, I love you. We miss you. We had got um burgers and had a drink. And was loading up on the phone with the fam. I'm trying to book a fourth of July trip. Um twelve out twelve hour drive. So we cool. Well don't tell mom. And I know that uh when I did text you shown y'all like my full studio space so if you knew welcome boo okay. 
Usually she be brows on fleek. Right now she looking <laughs> fat. Okay. <laughs> It's 11 11. Okay, I was telling you that I work in a studio with a lot of different other artists, and um, usually you all just see the inside of my studio, but I share this building with about is it 40, 40, 50 other artists, and yeah, it's a super dope space. Um, it's in Ballard, Washington. The building is called Building C. I should actually follow us on Instagram because that's where we share when we have open studio events and like market sales and all sorts of stuff. The ratchet strapping the last three pieces into the truck. These are the three that's actually headed home with us. We're bringing home Sagittarius, Taurus, Sag, Taurus, and Virgo. Yeah, we gonna call it a wrap. I'm headed home, peace. Babies are back in the studio, y'all. It's, cr I can't even express to you how warp speed this Zodiac show was. To have been working on something for four years and for like, we done. <laughs> That's it. Well, no, actually, I mean, of, of course the paintings are still here and they're still available. So I can see maybe doing um, a traveling exhibit where I show them at multiple different locations. Actually, my friend Moses, Moses' son, he's on his way over here to do a studio visit. He is a curator for a show that's taking place uh, during Seattle Art Fair weekend, the uh, EXO Seattle exhibit that's taking place. I'm so geeked for that because they're doing like a grand opening reception. It's like slash summer party. So now we out, we outside, we can have fun. So I'm super excited. So maybe some of these pieces are gonna go up since we are, since it is a group show, you know, you don't bring too many pieces because you gotta share the space. So pretty much y'all, we have been putting in major work of getting the studio together so we completely reorganize the whole thing. It feels so much more open. Now granted, it's cluttered, okay? It's, it's hella cluttered, but it's a work in progress. Here's my game plan. Okay, if people are like curious what artists do with their paintings when they're when they're done with a show, uh, of course everybody does different things, but I'm gonna let y'all know what I do. Pretty much, um, I keep them. No, no. Some of them I do keep though to be a part of my long-term uh, collection. So to, to me, honestly, y'all, I think it's, let me get y'all lined up. To me, I think it's actually important for artists to keep uh, some of their works. I think it's great. Of course, we want to share, share with the world. Sell those originals, honey. Okay, sell them. Especially if you create a lot of work after a certain time. It's like, okay, I don't even have storage for this, right? So if you're a prolific artist like that, sell them works, honey. But I think it's also important to hold on to a few. One, one for your personal collection, two for your estate. Okay, so one of the things that I be thinking about is like long term. To me, selling an original is like, it's like a singer or songwriter or rapper selling their masters. Okay, like one, once it's out, it's out, you know? Now I think what's really dope about like NFTs and stuff is that now you can set up a contract where you can still get royalties on it, but... <laughs> Okay, besides all that, if y'all missed that like NFT crypto video that I was talking about, y'all should check that one out. It's funny because I'm sure the Bitcoin bros are pretty, pretty upset since the crypto <laughs> market has took a huge nosedive. But anywho, once my originals are gone, they're gone. Now, granted, I can still sell prints of them, but that's it, you know? So some of them I do hold on to. And over the years, I'm so grateful that I did because of course, with time, the value of artist work increases, especially as they continue to get exposure, get connected with galleries, take on different big commissions, tour and have traveling exhibits all over the world. So that's really my goal, y'all. Your girl is trying to be international, worldwide, iconic, legendary out here. So I'm like, let me hold on to one or two for the estate, for the babies, for the family in the future, because I feel like for every artist, it's unfortunate, but it kind of is what it is. And what it is is that a lot of artists get, become the most iconic when they pass away. I'm not trying to wait for that. <laughs> I'm not about that life, okay? I also do just like understand the reality of it, you know? So I'm, I'm keeping some of them. The ones that I'm keeping are the biggest ones, of course. And Andy's like, really, babe? Really? Where are you gonna store those? 
to tell you the truth, I'm rolling them back up. Okay, so y'all know I roll my canvases um, on like a loose, so I pretty much, I paint my canvases on loose canvas roll, and then when I'm done, I take them off the stretcher bars and I re-roll them. Now, I'm not doing that for a lot of them because I did varnish them all except two. The two that I didn't varnish is Gemini and Aquarius, and those are the two that I'm keeping, and those are the two that I'm rolling back up. Okay, I'm gonna have to do a whole separate video to see like what the re-rolling process is like for a varnish painting, because to tell y'all the truth, I haven't done that yet. So these, pa these paintings that I be rolling up, and actually some people ask me those questions in my canvas video, but yeah, um, they aren't varnished, okay? <laughs> but the ones that are varnished, I keep them stretched. So that's where majority of them gonna go. Actually, uh, Andy is gonna come back and he's gonna build me like a raft up here. He actually did that in my previous studio. So this was here before I moved in. Y'all see this like raft here? So he's gonna do a similar thing here where we have about three bars that go from here to there. And then we're gonna be able to slide the frames on top so we can have storage. So for example, this is Gemini. I'm taking her out of the frame and rolling her up. And so when she's rolled in a tube, she's gonna be nice and thin and narrow, but I don't wanna break down the frame because the way Andy built it is pretty solid, you know? I shared that with y'all in the frame video. I'll link that. And so yeah, I wanna, I wanna roll her up, get her smooth, like, the way that she presented wasn't ideal for me. Of course, like at the end of the day, she's stunning, right? Like both both of the twins are serving vibes, but I really want to be able to stretch this better and like clean it up a little bit. And so over time, um, and maybe even this line can come out. I think I, I think I talked about this line before how I fold the canvas. So yeah, y'all, like every painting is a bit of an experiment, you know, and like each one is gonna behave a little bit differently. And y'all know I use that really thick canvas. So, ooh, is my phone on silent? Y'all, I think he here. Ooh, nice, okay, traffic. <laughs> Look at traffic, Seattle traffic. He'll be here in about 10 minutes, so I'm gonna try to keep this little rant short. Y'all, I got all the feels, and I, what I'm doing now is sharing a lot more of that in my blog cast, so that's where I share audio recordings of just my, my musing, my thoughts. I think I've renaming it like Behind the Brush, because y'all know I could just go on a rant, okay, and just talk and share about that. So if you like sort of more chatty things, you can listen to it on Spotify, or you can just head over to my website and listen to it there, and you can can read it and comment below. The thing about podcasts on Spotify, I'd be like, man, I'll be wanting to comment and tell them and like share my feedback. So that was the other reason that we did it as a blog on my website. Y'all can definitely tune in there because I shared the news that I didn't get accepted into the Black Rock residency. Okay, so the first like initial feeling was disappointment, but as I started to think about it a little bit more, I actually felt a sense of relief, which was really interesting. And so if you don't know, that is Kahinde Wiley's residency that he started back in 2019 uh, in Senegal, where he has like, I think 12 to 16 artists come out there. They can pick one to three months for their artist residency. I didn't get it. This has been my second time applying. And of course, I'm going to keep applying. I talk a lot more about that in this blogcast episode, so y'all should check that out. But pretty much what I'm saying is like, I'm going to do my own residency. I'm going to do my own residency and just like, I don't need an excuse anymore to dedicate the time that I need to my creative passion. Because right now it's just been, <sighs> I'm gonna be honest with y'all, I haven't painted in months, y'all. And it's just been like, really kind of, really kind of pulling at me. Now I've been kind of playing around with some paints at home, but I just really love creating in my studio and I haven't really even had the time to do that. So I'm like, I'm taking action, okay? I'm not about to be on this rat race of trying to keep up with all the things. I've been saying this for a couple blogs, okay? I've been saying this for a couple times of me just being lost, trying to figure it out. She not lost no more, okay? She's just taking action. I have a lot more clarity on it, and I'm just choosing to take the to step away and take the time that I need to create and just to really create a new solid body of work because I am leaning towards getting gallery representation, you know, and taking it to the next level. And so I'm like, what does that next level look like? And I'm still trying to figure that out, but I know I am getting clear that I really want to sell my originals. I really want to honor the like just the privacy that creation takes, you know, like for all the artists y'all see that be showing up online and doing all the things that's work too. I 
also want to acknowledge that's creativity as well. Like when you hear the term like content creator, I definitely think that there's a lot of creativity in this process, but that's really not my goal, y'all. Like, I don't want to be out here like prostituting my personality and process, okay? I want people to purchase my paintings, all right? Like, that needs to be, <laughs> okay? Ain't, no, ain't nobody out here trying to serve up vibes in this way. I'm trying to serve up vibes from the colors that I create on a canvas. Okay, is she being poetic today? Like, what's up with all, with all the word alliteration? I, I'm not bad at it. I'm not mad at it, but also, also, I'm not about to like shrink myself or hide my light or hide my personality because because of whatever insecurity I have around around whatever. Okay, that's the whole rant. I'm gonna still show up as me, period, point blank, but I really do, I just want the privacy back that I enjoy in my creative process. And so, yeah, I'm gonna do a, I'm doing an independent, self-appointed, artist residency right here in Seattle, right here in my studio. And I'm still trying to figure out how to do that. And I'm also still trying to figure out how to fund that <laughs> because part of me showing up in a, in a consistent way is it helps me get income. Like when I'm showing up here on YouTube, there's, you know, marketing for my work as well as YouTube AdSense, as well as Patreon, all the different things. But it's like, if I have a private moment to just create, how am I still generating revenue, you know? My battery died. <laughs> the battery died on the camera using my phone. So back to what I was saying is just, so I'm still trying to figure out, okay, how do I generate revenue? Because I have noticed that my online presence is almost in direct correlation to my income. And so, but I've also noticed that I don't have to show up online per se. It's really about cultivating the community who really wanna see my art grow in the way that I see it, which is like, y'all, I'm this time I'm about to break it down, okay? <laughs> I'm just here to make my patrons proud. You know, I like it just amazes me when I think about the people who invested in my career in an early in the early journey and pretty much ain't nothing I got no more is available as five hundred dollars. <laughs> so shout out to the people who purchased <laughs> like seven years ago. Now we on a whole new wave. But I still wanna it's like okay I'm still understanding that there's new people finding me and discovering me every day. And you know that option isn't available always to purchase thousands and thousand dollars of originals. So I'm like I still have a few originals that I kept from years ago that I think could still be affordable for people. So I'm thinking about doing like a self-funded fundraiser where the sales of those originals directly fund the time that I can have to dedicate my time to my work and not have to worry about launching a product or selling a print or coming out with a cool marketing campaign or do, showing up on Instagram or showing up wherever. It's just really the people who want to own an original from me now while it's maybe 3000 5000 because as I grow and build, I see those becoming 20000 40000 50 six figures. I mean, that's that's truly where, where I want to go. And so the people who the people who vibe with me now is really people that I that I have so much love and admiration and appreciation and respect for to see and to believe in the growth that I'm gonna have in the future. And that's y'all. Look, if you if you here watching that video, look, shout out to you, shout out to my early collectors, my patrons as well. I think what I'm gonna do is do like a private patron launch where they get access to these like affordable originals and they can also, and like pretty much anybody who purchased my originals, I always have payment plans. So I'm thinking about launching that. Still trying to figure out the details. Y'all are literally witnessing me come up with these ideas as I speak with you, as I share them. But if you're curious and if you are a collector and really want to be a part of this early journey with me, hop on a newsletter, y'all. That's that's really where I'm going to be sharing those details. If you if you want to be a part of the journey and like helping my artwork grow and contributing to my craft um, while I'm still here and available and as an independent artist, because I do see myself transitioning y'all into gallery representation. I really do. And I can share that on a whole nother level, but I think I'm gonna wrap up this video here, okay? Where you can find me is at aohammer.com, y'all. I'm really about to go hard on the blog, really about to share some inside things behind the scenes. And if you really wanna contribute to my craft on a deeper level, I would love for you to become a member of the Patreon community. And that means the world to me. I will connect with y'all later. And remember, if you like this video, like it, and I will see you all next week.